Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a video about biochemical tests. I will show you the procedures of the test and give you explanations for the results. Biochemical tests can be categorized into two major groups based on the nature of their results. They can be quantitative or qualitative. A qualitative test only shows you the presence or absence of a substance in a sample, while quantitative tests will show you the amount of the substance in a sample. Sometimes, a test might give you a rough estimation of the amount of a substance. It is known as semi-quantitative test. The test for reducing sugars is known as Benedict's test. All monosaccharides are reducing sugars, and some disaccharides too, such as maltose. The test reagent used is called Benedict solution. It is a blue color solution. First, add equal amount of sample and Benedict solution into a test tube. Shake to mix the solutions and then place the test tube into a water bath. Make sure the water bath is more than 80 degrees Celsius. So, a boiling water bath is good for the test. Heat the solution for 2 to 5 minutes. The initial blue coloration of the mixture will turn green, then yellowish, and may finally form a brick red precipitate. Depends on the amount of reducing sugar in the sample. If there's no reducing sugar in the sample, the solution will remain blue. Benedict's solution contains copper sulfate. Reducing sugars reduce the soluble blue copper sulfate into insoluble red-brown copper oxide. The latter is seen as precipitate. A few extra steps are required if you want to test the presence of a non-reducing sugar such as sucrose. First, add 2 cm cube of sucrose solution into a test tube. Then, add 1 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid. Boil the solution for 1 minute. After that, neutralize the mixture with sodium hydrogen carbonate. Keep adding until no effervescence can be observed. Get 1 to 2 cm cube of the resulting solution and carry out Benedict's test. The idea of this test is, when you heat the sucrose solution with an acid, it is being hydrolyzed. Sucrose is hydrolyzed to glucose and fructose. That's why you will get a positive result when you carry out Benedict test. Neutralization with sodium hydrogen carbonate is required to remove a possible false positive result due to the presence of hydrochloric acid. To test the presence of starch, you just have to add a few drops of iodine in potassium iodide solution to the sample. If it turns blue-black, starch is present in the sample. Emulsion test is used to test the presence of lipids. Add equal amount of sample and ethanol to a test tube. Dissolve the lipids by shaking the mixture vigorously. Add an equal volume of cold water into the test tube. A cloudy white suspension shows the presence of lipids. Lipids are insoluble in water and soluble in ethanol. After lipids have been dissolved in ethanol and then added to water, they will form tiny dispersed droplets in the water. This is called an emulsion. These droplets scatter light as it passes through the water, so it appears white and cloudy. The test for proteins is called Burette's test. First, add equal amount of sample and potassium hydroxide solution to a test tube. Mix them well and add a few drops of copper sulfate solution. A purple coloration shows the presence of proteins. This is a test for peptide bonds. In the presence of dilute copper sulfate in alkaline solution, nitrogen atoms in the peptide chain form a purple complex with copper ions. If you want to estimate the concentration of a glucose solution, you can carry out the semi-quantitative Benedict's test. First, you have to prepare a set of standard solutions by using a stock solution with non-concentration. For example, if you were given a stock solution of 4% glucose, you can use serial dilution to prepare 2%, 1%, 0.5%, and 0.25% glucose. You should have at least 5 standard solutions. If you want to know more about dilution methods, you can find the link to my video on this topic in the description section. Carry out Benedict's test to all 5 of the solutions. There are two ways you can choose from to record the result. You can either record the time taken for the first sign of color change or record the final color change after a fixed time. If you choose the first way, start the stopwatch once you place the sample and Benedict's solution mixture into the water bath. When the solution starts to turn green, 
stop the timer and record the time. You will find that the higher the concentration, the shorter it takes for the solution to change its color. Plot your results into a graph. Then, carry out the same test for the glucose solution with unknown concentration. Once you get a result, you can use interpolation method to find its concentration. If you choose the second way, carry out Benedict test for all of the solutions for a fixed time, for example, 2 minutes. When you have done the test, you will have a series of color standard. The higher the concentration is, the more intense its brick red coloration is. Carry out the test with the same manner for the unknown sample. Then, match its color to the color standard and estimate its concentration. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook. See you again soon.